Okay, laptop here, notes, camera, lighting, we're good. Hello everyone, hello, hello, and welcome to my one year reflection of being an underwriter, and thank you so much for being so patient. I have been trying my best. Well, I could have tried harder, but I've been trying to figure out how to make this video very compact, very to the point, very as a matter of fact for my one year mark. So I wrote some things down so I don't get off topic too much, but I am Sil Sil, an Atlanta-based planner person that loves traveling and vlogging. I'm a digital curator of things, you know? No niche kind of niche. That's where we are with it. So now we are here talking about how my very first year as a property and casualty underwriter, how it has been, what have I learned, what do I need to work on? All of those things in a matter of minutes. So what is an underwriter? What industry is it in? And how did I get here? Let's sum that up, okay? The world of insurance is under the umbrella of finance. So I am a finance girl, okay? I am in the world of STEM. Yes. At this point in my life, did I think I would be on the mathematics side of STEM? No, but we're here and it can still help me get to what my dream job is. Finance, then insurance, and then you have me. I am a property and casualty underwriter and that means that I work with auto, home. Those are the things under that property and casualty umbrella. But I specialize in the home product. I don't work with vehicles anymore. In my previous role, I did more interactions with reps and clients regarding their auto, but now I am strictly home related. What does that mean? That means that if you bought a house and you are closing on your house, the mortgage company needs to see that you have insurance. You go through your agent. I make sure that this is a risk that we would like to take on because I assess the risk of the company. Whereas the rep is the liaison between the person needing insurance and the insurance company. So they are the salespeople of the insurance industry. Now, even though I can't speak for what reps or agents I use that simultaneously, but I can't speak for everything that they do on the day to day. I am on the back end, so I don't speak to clients, but I do hear about all of the interesting scenarios that they come up with before they sign away. That is just the brief overview of what it is that I do. I got into the world of insurance roughly about seven or eight years ago now, and I was on the support side of underwriting when I first started, I needed a job. The job that I had was coming to a close because it was contract work. And even though I loved being in patient advocacy at the time, I needed something that paid the rent, paid for the gas, paid for the groceries. And I ended up going to a job fair. And all of the experience that I had combined landed me a role in the underwriting department for another company. And I was with them for quite a while, but I grew complacent and I was losing my vim and passion for why I moved to Atlanta in the first place. So not to go too deep into that, fast forward, we're here now, new company, and I was in another department for one year. Then I applied for the underwriter role, I got it, and that's where I've been since August of 2020. One. There is a vlog about my first day. I think I also have my first week. Can't recall. It's on here. I'll leave it in the cards. Let's go into what I actually do for my work day. I know that I've done day in the life videos that were mainly focused on my planning process for the day, but what am I doing when I get to work? I used to work with nine different states. That was before October 31st. Now I work all states, all of them. All of the states that we do business in, I now underwrite for all of those states. That means that I need to know multiple state guidelines of insurance, down to who needs to sign what and who doesn't. There's some states where you need to sign that. Oh no, we don't need to sign that. We need a picture of that. No, we don't need a picture of that. Oh no, we need to get that. Oh no, we don't care about that. I have to know what we need and don't need 
before we get audited. So I do keep that in mind. I have to be on top of my documents and I find that I overthink with this position, but that's who I am as a person. I am pretty adaptable to my environment, but it's just taking me a little bit longer because I don't want to mess up. And I think me not wanting to mess up is messing me up because I need to be working faster. I'm in a production-based environment, sadly. I don't like a production-based environment, but I think what makes this role different from my last one, in that environment, we had more up-to-date programs to help monitor our progress on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas in the underwriting department that I'm currently in, the systems are a little bit antiquated. They're working through that, but while they're working through that, I also need to be working. I'm finding my, my groove. I just need to find it faster because I have goals that I want to meet. Let's go through some examples because I'm rambling at this point. Contact your agent, you bought a house, you need this insurance, right? Not a brand new house, house is probably from 1988 and the roof was renovated, the interior is beautiful, the landscaping is nice. You would think that, okay, great, my house looks great, so it should be fine, right? No, because when your agent sends it to us, we see that, babe, babe, this roof was not replaced. Um, we need a railing on those stairs in the back. Um, we see that there are like three sheds back there and they're falling apart. Like, what are we doing about that? Because remember, the underwriter manages the risk and we assess that. So if it's something that we could potentially pay out for, we need to make sure that we are getting the correct information for what we're covering. It can get a little bit interesting with that. I also work with cancellation. So let's say you sold that home and you forgot that your mortgage company was paying for it out of escrow and it's been eight months. You call your former rep and you're like, hey, can you cancel that policy? I didn't even realize my mortgage company was still making payments on my behalf. I don't even own that home anymore. The agent will then send us a request to cancel and they say, oh, well, the insured forgot. So can you, you know, um, cancel it as of eight months ago or six months ago or whatever the case. Yeah, no, no, because we could still have an insurable interest in this home. You need to send me proof that they sold it so that we can guarantee that we didn't have insurable interest in this property. We need documents. So sometimes the reps get on our case about, oh, well, it's hard for us to make sales when you're asking for all this stuff. It's not my company. I, I work for the company. I'm just going by the guidelines, you know what I mean? We do end up being the bearer of bad news a lot of the times with discounts, with rates going up. They seem very little to the agency side, but for us, they are major factors in what could happen to the company if we don't get it right. So those are just a couple of the things that we go through where we're still going through our emails, calls come in randomly throughout the day because Agents are begging and pleading their cases as to why we don't need to reject something. We are also getting little documents here and there for things that we probably worked on two weeks ago and we asked you for the document and for whatever reason, you're just now sending it in a brand new month, but okay. Uh, so for whatever reason, we are constantly working through emails, phone calls, and during those calls, we get the most interesting scenarios. Here's an example. Jane passed away. I'm sorry to hear that. Her daughter is on the title of the home. Okay. And how may I assist? Well, we want to keep the policy active. Okay. Unfortunately, the daughter can't inherit an insurance policy. You have to rewrite the policy in the name of the client, which in this case would be the daughter. Okay, but it's a different address. Okay, so we're not insuring the home that Jane Doe had? No, we are. Okay, so what is the new address? Well, they bought the lot next to their home. So they built mom's home next to theirs. Okay, so 
does the tax assessor say that it's just one big lot now or what? Well, no, they're going to be moving the home. Um, so are you telling me? So are you saying that this is a mobile home? Well, it can be moved. What are you not telling me? What are you, what are you not saying? I said, well, in order for us to insure a property at a location, we need a location right? So we can't insure the home while it's in transit, unfortunately. When it has a physical address, we'll be able to then assess the dwelling. Because what I don't want to say is that, oh yeah, we'll cover it when they put it down. No, because I don't know that. I don't know if Jane Doe's living room is going to be sliding and gliding down the highway before you piece it back together and put it down on the property. It's just a weird scenario that they give us. Another one, Billy Bob got a divorce. Okay, okay. And his wife was still on the policy when we canceled it. Okay, how may I assist with that? Well, we need you to cancel the check. My hand is raised. I am not a billing department. I can't touch your money. So um, what we can do is reinstate the policy, change the name. If you have your documents, we love a good document. We love proof. So if you have proof that they weren't married at the time of the cancellation, then we can go ahead and get that name change for you. And then I can get you over to billing so that they can handle that rewrite of the check. Now, if the check was already cashed, well, that's the thing it was. I do apologize for that, but Billy Bob has to contact his ex-wife for the funds. We don't have a way of canceling that or dispersing more money under this policy if it was already cashed, unfortunately. So what is the client to do? Again, the client will have to reach out to his ex-wife for that money. So what is the client to do, unfortunately? The client will have to reach out to his ex-wife in order to retrieve that money. We would not be able to disperse more money on a policy that was already canceled and funds were already released and cashed. Well, this is all right. Well, <laughs> my hands are tied. Okay, that's I don't I don't know what else to tell you. I already said what I'm able to say. Can't give you free money because you didn't make a change on the policy. You know what I mean? Interesting scenarios, I will say that. I do enjoy being an underwriter, I will say that. I have a hard time with the production piece because I just wanna get it right and avoid the constant emailing back and forth if things need to be corrected or updated. I just wanna get it right once and I have to break out of that holding on to my work until it's fully complete. I have to just let it go through the processes that they have in place. And my former supervisor, he said, I know you're over here trying to fix things. Learn their process first, and then you can go in and fix it. And that's really what it is. Like I find so many nooks and crannies that really could streamline the process of the work that we do and I just want to fix it now so that we don't have to keep doing it the hard way the long way the unnecessarily extra keystrokes way but I have to learn the way that they have in place so that I can fully execute how it can be better so I took a while to get to that point but I think I have grasped a nice routine, a nice concept of it, and that's where we are today. Now, I've been talking for way too long. Let me show you a few clips while I pull up this other document. <laughs> Are you comparing it to a previous policy that they had or is it just for the... Mm -hmm. Okay, one moment. No, because I'm, I'm not going to make any changes. I just need to see what might be sparking that spike. <laughs> 
I do see that large uh, premium there. Hmm, showing a claim that is chargeable. Underwriting, how may I assist? Good, how are you? I can go ahead and flat cancel it and then it would issue that uh, refund. What is the policy number? And you did say that this was new business, correct? Yes. did issue this as of this morning, actually. So I'm going to send it over to processing so that they're made aware to just go ahead and flat cancel it. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Bye-bye. Underwriting, how may I assist? Okay. One moment. Okay. Okay, have they updated any plumbing, electrical, HVAC, or anything? The rep probably used that rate class because of the age of the home. If you change it to a rate class A, it would have to be insured for, well, again, we, we don't have any updates on the electrical, HVAC, or plumbing. Thank you for calling. Okay, I'm back. I don't even remember what that footage was. It's been so long. This document that I'm looking at is a progress tracker. It's more of an, it's more like a development plan that I created for myself when I was in the other department so that I don't lose sight of what my, my goal is in this industry. So one of the career interests was a promotion within my previous department, which I did get it, but then I accepted the offer and then I got the underwriting offer and I accepted that too. So then I had to go ahead and decline the other offer. So funny thing with that is, my supervisor at the time, which you guys have heard me talk about him before if you've seen all of those videos, but um, guess who's in underwriting now as a supervisor? My old supervisor, he's following me. Anyway, I said that to say, he wants me to be better so that I can be back on his team. I think that's what's happening. I think that's what he's doing. That's fine, let me get it together. So I'm currently an underwriter. I'm technically a senior associate underwriter. I'm not a senior underwriter because that's a different tier group. But anyway, I then want to be an underwriting lead or a senior underwriter. That's someone who works with multiple lines like auto, umbrella, um, someone who also works with home as well. I do work with other subsections of home. I don't remember if I said this earlier, but when I first started, I was able to underwrite up to 1.2 or $1.4 million homes. And uh, now I work with high value watercrafts as well as high value homes and the standard homes that I was already underwriting. So that means homes over 1.4 million, I see those they don't come around very often, but I see them enough to know that this house is expensive. And for the watercraft, so any of your boats that are $60,000, okay. Um, yeah, I see those too. And I also see a lot of the scheduled personal property. Those are your personal property items, your Cartier's, Rolexes your um, Audemars, I see all of that stuff. I see the big, huge wedding rings. I see the tennis bracelets. I see all of that ranging from 700 something dollars and as high as like 30,000 on some stuff, 50,000. I see your guns and lots of them and I get I get scared about that. Anyway, so back to the career interest. So underwriting lead or senior and then underwriting consultant senior, those are my underwriting career interests because ultimately, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it. Ultimately, I have a number in mind salary wise. And if I stay in the world of underwriting, then I wanna hit that. When I get a promotion, maybe we can talk about what that salary range is, but I do have a number in mind and it is a beautiful number. For the life that I enjoy living, this will be a great number.
uh, that's kind of what I have here. I don't really have much else to discuss. I still work with one line of business. I enjoy it. I'm learning a lot. No two days are the same and I'm probably going to get into at least an hour of overtime. I was telling my mom earlier today that I know that I like what I'm doing because even when I'm wrapping up for the for the work day, I feel like, oh, I just want to finish this thing that I started working on and I realized then like I like what I'm doing let me let me not act like I don't like what I'm doing I like what I'm doing I just don't like that it is a production-based environment but I have to work through that to get to the point where I won't be in a production-based environment so that's where I am with it I hope you got something from this if you have any property and casualty related questions when it comes to underwriting or maybe an underwriting support role let me know hopefully i can help and really quickly the underwriting support role or service role whichever company you're looking at and they have that type of role that is more of the back end coding uh, system so you would communicate with the underwriters and very rarely with the reps and they weren't allowed to call us they barely emailed us and um we mainly worked with the underwriters assigned to certain policies so we would correct any of those back end errors that the underwriters were getting we would go in and make sure that we're able to process that within the guidelines for the state that they're working in whereas the underwriter now that i see both sides the underwriter approves what that uh changes that came in so if the rep is like hey we're adding a $40,000 watch, but it won't let me push it through. Well, your binding authority is for a lot less than that. So you do need to make sure I can check it. And then once I approve it, I send it to the processor so they can go ahead and get that added with all the bells and whistles of the item. Because I don't go in and put ladies 14 karat gold tennis bracelet with 1.5 diamonds. I don't do that part. You should already have that on the documents. But I just wanted to say that in case anyone was curious about what would be the difference between the support role and the actual underwriter role. Anyway, I have talked your ear off enough. I'm about to go and get my life in order because it's a short work week. Maybe I need to do a day in the life tomorrow. And I think tomorrow's my late day. I'll talk to you later. We'll do another one of these at year two. Will the promotion come before year two? I don't know. Until next time. Bye.